this is uh, going to take a little bit of explaining. This is the brand new second generation Pixie camera. And this wasn't sent to me. I bought this brand new straight from Pixie, straight from France where it is made. This is the first brand new camera I've ever bought. And that was mostly because it is impossible, nearly impossible to find used. Now I know what you're thinking. What's a Pixie camera? Pixie is a camera startup that popped up a few years ago, founded by a software engineer with a passion for photography which just sounds like the perfect recipe <laughs> for some tech startup. There's been two iterations of this camera so far, a 12 megapixel version, that was the first generation, and now this 26 megapixel version with some other improvements going on here. Both of them are APS-C size sensors that use the Leica M-mount and have rangefinders. The idea of this camera is very special. It mixes the analog feeling of the rangefinder experience, manual focus, and yeah, no LCD screen on the back. Going back to the film era here. It mixes that with a very high-tech experience integrated with the smartphone, very much so. And it's this convergence and almost weird obsession with old and new technologies into one camera that really attracted me to this camera in the first place. Because y'all know that I like really weird stuff. Now, before you get worried, this camera will work perfectly fine without a smartphone. So you don't need a smartphone to operate it. You can get the pictures off of it without a smartphone. Um, the smartphone just kind of adds some niceties to it, but it doesn't add any different functionality to it, which I was worried about too, because what happens if this startup kind of realistically goes out of business and now all of a sudden I'm left with a brick of a camera. So thankfully this can be used completely without that software. Let me show off the camera body itself to you because there is a lot going on here. Here's the rangefinder viewfinder. This works like a normal rangefinder viewfinder in that there's a patch in the middle of it where you align the double images and that's how you obtain focus. What you're seeing otherwise when you look through it is the whole world around you always in focus. There are highlighted frame lines based on the focal length you pick and the settings. And down at the bottom is minimal information about shutter speed and exposure and things like that. And I personally find this information hard to see, especially wearing glasses. I think it just pushes it a little bit too far out of my way here. Um, but they are supposed to be like non-distracting. So maybe that's the point. You control the camera with these two dials and this button right here. In A mode right here, you select the aperture on the lens and the ISO in the menu, and the camera chooses a shutter speed. By moving this dial anywhere else, you enter into M mode, and then this dial becomes a shutter speed selection dial. The second dial here is for flipping through the very limited and easy to use menu. From here, you can adjust ISO, picture profile, white balance, and more. You can also switch the camera from bare to monochrome mode. So let's talk about that. Now this could be a topic of its own video, but just so you know, this is not true monochrome, at least in the traditional sense. Both of these modes still have the bare color filter array on the sensor. It's not moving that out of the way. Basically, this is a software attempt at monochrome with some benefits, but not all the benefits because you can't have all the benefits unless you actually take that color filter array off the sensor and actually collect more light. Pixie has more information about this on their website. And then of course, I'm gonna personally test this more, but in my limited testing, it does make a difference. In the end, it's just a software attempt at true monochrome that gives you at, in the end, a monochrome raw file. So that's kind of cool. The camera has no memory card slot. Instead, it opts for onboard memory only. So when you purchase the camera, just like when you put, purchase a phone or a laptop nowadays, there's a memory option and that's the only time you can do that. You can't self upgrade it and there's no removable storage. And obviously for some people, this feels like a huge drawback. I remember the old days of Android loving to swap the micro SD cards and having that expandable removable storage, but it also comes with some advantages. Theoretically, it could be much faster you don't have to worry about failing SD cards. And then it just makes the overall design of the camera much simpler to work with. And I actually think this might be an interesting future for other cameras to take in the future. So we don't have to keep walking around, taking an SD card out of our camera and walking over someplace else and put it, it just feels really archaic nowadays. The camera does have a removable battery, but it does not come with a battery charger. The battery is charged through this USB-C port up here. Thank you, it's USB-C. I'm a big fan of that. 
So this is how you charge the camera, but it's also how you're able to connect it to your computer in case you didn't wanna go through your phone app to download pictures. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, this camera's kinda cool. Maybe I'll try it out. If this no screen didn't turn you off and the manual focus only didn't turn you off, then maybe the price will. These start at 3,000 US dollars and then go up from there depending on the memory option you pick. That sounds crazy, right? And yeah, this camera, I don't think is for most people, but amazingly, the price is sort of well justified. For one, it's a startup company, and so they haven't scaled their business yet. So cameras like these are always gonna be more expensive than other cameras until they can do that. And I don't know if this up here is my serial number, but uh, if it is, there are not very many of these cameras in existence right now. And two, this company isn't going after Sony. It's not a Sony killer. It's not a Canon or Nikon killer. It's going after Leica. And Leica photographers are used to spending a lot of money for something that has less features, but gives you an overall photographic experience that you want and produces really lovely images. Now, I will not make any claims about this camera versus a Leica. I've never used a Leica, so I'm going to let others talk about that. But that's the market, at least, that they're going after. Now, I bought this camera with my hard-earned cash, my first brand new camera, and I have some reasons for that. The first is that I just think it's plain cool. I mean, the kid in me is freaking hell. I'm nerding over this camera. Just forget about the price for a minute. If you could experience this weird mashup of high-tech and very low-tech in a totally different form, different from other cameras you've ever used before, wouldn't you want to try it? And my second thought goes along with that. I love trying unique cameras from the past, and it usually goes something like this. Hey, this camera is really cool. Why did they stop making these? And after a couple of these, the thought struck me, why don't I support initiatives going on right now to make unique cameras and stop reporting on them when they're 10 years old and the camera system is dead and the company is bankrupt? A lot of cameras are just the same, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I like normal cameras too. They're good at what they do. But as a camera lover, I get excited when people go out there and try to do something drastically different than the mainstream. I think they're taking a big risk. I think it's cool and I wanna support that with my own money. And then my third reason is kind of like a fallback reason. And that is these cameras can only be bought from Pixie right now. In fact, you kind of pre-order them and then they have to like reserve it for the next batch. So I had to wait a month or so to get this shipped to me. So the resale value on the used market is very good. So if and when I decide I don't really like this camera anymore, or I'm just passing it on to someone else, I'll actually be able to get back most of what I paid for it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe nobody would want to buy this camera from me. So more on this camera in the future, including hopefully a response from Pixie Support, whom I emailed several days ago, please answer your email about one issue I'm having. So we'll see about that. In the meantime, if you haven't seen my video on the Samsung Galaxy NX or any of the other cool cameras I have on my channel, Go ahead and check those out now. I'll leave links to those here. And as always, go out there and shoot with whatever camera gear you have. Until next time, happy snapping.